So hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So another Jetter review here on my channel. So what I have here is the X70 Sport. So this is one of the middle teams of the X70 lineup here in the Philippines. But to be honest, if I were gonna get an X70, it will be the journey because it's just above the 1 million peso mark. But if you get this Sport variant with a little bit more features, this one is at 1,299,000 pesos. So there are not much reviews of this X70 Sport. That's why I couldn't wait to get my hands on this SUV slash PPV, MPV, whatever you want to call it. I'll get on that later. So, let's start here with the looks of this X70 Sport. So, you already know my all-time favorite crossover, which is the Jetur Dashing, which looks like a Lamborghini Euros. But for this X70, this time, doesn't the front clip resemble a bit that of the Isuzu MEX? And they're the same little white color, the one I reviewed almost two years ago now. Ground clearance over here is actually pretty generous at 210 millimeters. That's why I mentioned it's classed like a PPV. And the biggest surprise for me here with this X70 Sport, this is one of the few Chinese vehicles that I know of that are on 20-inch wheels. So, pairing this X70 Sport, By the way, opening this hood is much, much heavier than that of the dashing. Yeah, it kind of gives it almost like a two-man effort opening this thing. So, pairing this X70 Sport, a one and a half liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine that produces 147 horsepower and 210 newton meters of torque. So, almost 10 horsepower down and 20 newton meters down. However, though, this one is mated to an eight-speed automatic transmission. So. Very interesting, Jeter didn't decide to put a 7-speed wet type dual clutch in this X70 Sport. So, I expect a lot more changes when we get to drive this X70 Sport. So, on the side profile too, I really dig this look. There's like clean lines here and there and there's not much cladding here too. So, this one resembles now a little bit of Mazdas in my opinion. I love this lower side bit of the X70. There's a lot of clean lines here and there. So here now at the rear of the X70 Sport, so you get LED taillights over here, but weirdly the ones in front have LED DRLs, but the main headlight is halogen. So you can get only LED, full LEDs on the X70 Plus. So I've yet to see one of those, so hopefully review of that coming soon too. So yet again, my favorite part of this X70 Sport is the rear. I mean, it just looks so clean and you don't get fakey whatsoever. You have real exhaust and however though you get one, fake vent over here on either side but it's just a minor thing anyway so yet again a big jet tour patch over here and you have an electronic tailgate it is kind of slow though but at least there is you have a reverse camera here more on that when i get to in the interior so this is another big surprise with this x70 sport this is a seven seater so this is a seven seater so with all of the sorry it's a bit windy it's a stormy day so with all of the seats up you have at least around 200 liters and underneath you have storages for your ewd and for your tire repair kit your spare wheel is underneath over here and then folding the seats down is pretty easy too i mean you just pull these latches down and then it will fold completely flat so the total space now is 1260 liters and finally if you fold all of the seats down it is yet again flat it is at 1680 liters which is pretty generous for this class of crossover so there's a 12 volt socket here on the left side and just one halogen light on the right side so yeah that's about it here with the X70 Sport, let's check out the interior. So this is the interior of the Jetter X70 Sport. So this one's a little bit refreshing, gotta be honest, over the dashing. I know I love the dashing to my heart, but here it feels just a little bit more simpler. So here in the door card, you have soft squeegee materials and then brown leather with cubby spaces, cup holders on either side. So actually the quality here seems pretty good. Like here on top of the dashboard, like on top of the instrument cluster, yes, it's plastic. But the rest of it are soft squeegee materials with some stitching too. Okay, pretty impressive. 
So here on the left side of the dashboard, you have your air conditioning vent and an array of buttons for your lights and some other safety bits. And then further down below, you have an extra storage there at least. And then here in your steering wheel, okay, pretty good too. The leather's a little bit on the durable side of things, however, okay, seems still nice to the touch. So you have your volume adjustments on the left side and then on the right side, you have your cruise control functions. So a little bit more on the steering feel when I get to drive this. So here you have your 12 inch instrument cluster so actually pretty simple too and then the controls are pretty easy because there are buttons on the steering wheel excuse me and there's just some adjustments here and there but at least they're all the important stuff anyways so here in the middle you have your 10 inch infotainment system okay i will be very honest it feels a little bit dated however though it still does the job a little bit delay with the response if you're swiping left to right and you have to swipe it like right on the icons not just anywhere on the screen so by the way this car does not have officially android auto nor apple carplay but you can connect your phones via car bit so at least you can um connect your phone somehow and then here your around view monitor okay the camera systems are so so however at least you have a 360 degree camera all around the reverse camera yeah same story and then what else can you do here? I love that sound. It feels like an Android head unit. And then here in your car settings, yeah, there's a lot more you can do. So at least this X70 Sport being somewhat near the middle trim, yeah, there's still a lot of features here. So further down below, you have your air conditioning buttons, hazard button. And then here in the center console itself, yeah, there's a lot of gloss black. So in front, you have a cubby space, but not even my phone fits. And then here around in the gear shift, you have again your heater buttons, volume adjustments and then your auto hold function engine start stop button electronic parking brake and then hilariously your dive modes are here on the left side of course s is sport mode but for some reason you have winter mode no idea why you need that in this country but anyways so further behind you have two cup holders a placement for your key center console box it's a bit flim it's a bit flimsy to be honest but at least there's a decent amount of space yeah anyway and then glove box uh, that's kind of small and then the seats itself here this is what I love with the X70 Sport it's a two-tone black and brown layout and as well being an X70 Sport the seat tends to be on the more sportier side of things surprisingly and then above here you have your panoramic sunroof controls sun glasses holder lights their halogens and sun visor oh yeah you can see the sunroof here that's, that's just all the way to the second row surprisingly so the sun visor doesn't have a vanity mirror whatsoever but you have only on the right front passenger side don't extend and yeah anyways so yeah that's about it here in front of this x70 sport let's check out the second row so this is the second row of the jet tour x7 sport so same materials here on the door but albeit now the one above here is just pure plastic so i wish it was squeegee but anyway at least you still have the brown leather material along with smaller cubby spaces and cup holders on either side and then central armrest there are two cup holders here believe me there is i can just open because it's covered in plastic and surprisingly the space here is really good so knee room feet room and headroom despite the sunroof it is excellent throughout i'm a 5'4 person i am really small anyways so you have lights here on either side and then here you have two map pockets and in the middle you have two air conditioning vents and then way down below you have two usb ports and then if i sit here in the middle oh gosh i'm trapped <laughs> so anyway so you have a very small transmission tunnel only but at least you can put your feet wherever you want and yes that's pretty pretty simple here in the second row of the x70 sport however though remember there is a third row so the third row space is pretty decent so you can just ask the front person to move the second row seat forward and my headroom okay may not be the best out there but it's just on par with some seven seat crossovers in this class too so small adults and kids will be fine there in the back so as well you have one cubby space for your phones on the right side and then two more cup holders on the left side and then getting into the third row is a little bit complicated i mean you just pull this lever down i mean them straight it but at least it's just one long pull for the latch and it will fall down and then you can move forward and backwards but the second row seat sadly does not tumble and 
pretty hard but as you can see it's very hard to pull back the second row seat and then another thing I noticed too thank you Doc RM of riding and tandem there are no air conditioning vents in the third row whatsoever that could be a little bit of an issue but so far so good with the air conditioning it is kind of cold here but yeah maybe on a hot day yeah, it could be a little bit of a problem there so yeah that's about here in the interior of this X70 Sport let's go for a drive so finally diving the X70 Sport so actually I drove this around EDSA since we needed to gas but I got to experience the car a lot more so interesting to take note of remember I said this is mated to a 8 speed automatic transmission okay I would admit there is some delay sometimes even though you're in sport mode manual mode however though I do notice compared to the wet type dual clutch of the of the dashing this is much much smoother and yet again going back finally to the steering wheel there's a lot more weight now than usual this is more like it since I'm a power steering kind of guy no I mean it's much heavier than the dashing so there's somewhat uh, feel to it it's still light to use but it's not that heavy as one might think and then here too with the suspension so I'm driving around EDSA earlier the suspension is firm but I would say it's pretty pliant and then here uneven road NVH okay pretty good too there's some tire noise so remember the NVH I can say is really good because this is running on 20 inch rims they tend to be noisy since you have bigger wheels and tires but this one scoping it pretty good too so as well it was just in normal mode I had no idea what winter does so I will not turn that on for obvious reasons and then just going around in the city since around the Ed side the gas station earlier yes this is a way longer car and a bigger car than the dashing itself however though I didn't feel but it's like a big car to drive it's very very easy so now let's go sport mode and manual mode of course there will be body limb but it's not as bad as you think and look at the staying input compared to the dashing okay the handling is pretty good too and then there that's what i mean transmission will take time to what to kick down if you're in manual mode and it will automatically off shift but i just recommend just leave it in automatic mode and then here from a standstill a little foot, bit of a delay but once you get going So as well, being slightly detuned only, the performance is still adequate. Okay, it won't be, I think it's just as fast as the dashing because this 8-speed automatic transmission has short gear. So yes, it will tend to gear hunt here and there, but but it will be way more fuel efficient than the dashing itself. And this is a 7-seater. Where else can you get that kind of combo? And yeah, for this price point alone, yeah, it's one of the best value 7-seater crossovers I've tested out so far and what else oh yeah sport mode too it tends to weight up the thing a little bit more but yeah it's much better in terms of driving response even the transmission yes yet again there's a little bit of a delay but it's not so bad and you turn test okay not so bad well I have to do a three-point turn because this part's closed And visibility all around okay the D pillars not that big surprisingly and then as well since this being the near top of the line model this sport brand you're assisted with the 360 degree camera so it's all right and then going over humps again yeah you can feel a little bit of the firmness of the suspension but yet again that's just to accommodate if you have plenty of passengers since yet again this is a seven seater now here a proper u-turn test without any obstacles okay the turning radius is tight as well it goes to with the sharp steering the fuel economy i know it's just here around in the city and around the edsa i've been averaging it says here seven to eight kilometers per liter so somewhat the same like what i did with the jitter dashing and the fuel economy alone wow this is way more fuel efficient despite this being a heavier car having seven seats having 20 inch rims so on and so forth yeah this is such a good steel i have to say however being honest you should definitely consider this but i will definitely take the x70 journey like what i said earlier because of it's only above the 1 million peso mark but if i had the budget i would happily take this over 
the jitter dashing I have to say because again you have the accommodation of having a seven seater. So let's try it one more time. Brakes pretty good too, not very mushy. So that concludes my review of this X70 Sport. A lot of surprises here and there. So I'd like to thank everyone here at Jitter Edsel Sentis, Ma'am Hazel, and to Sir Tristan over here who assisted me here in this test drive. So their contact details will be in the description down below. So hope you guys like and subscribe, and I will see you hopefully with more Jitter reviews coming right up. Bye bye.